Okay, okay, here we go. Um, trig functions and their inverses, uh, 1.4, day number one. Uh, we're going to talk, you know, your typical SOHCAHTOA. We're going to talk a little bit of uh, special right triangles and then some solving of trig equations. So you're going to love it. You're going to be done with this today and, and feel real good about yourself, maybe. Objectives, 45, 45, 90, sine, cosine, tangent, trig identities, and solving trig equations. Uh, some basic trig functions. Um, sine, right? Here we go. Here's, here's our classic triangle in the first quadrant. Here is the adjacent side. Here is the opposite side. And here is the hypotenuse. Typically, they go by uh, x and y and r. Right? If this is the point x, y... I'm going to put them in terms of opposite and hypotenuse and adjacent on this. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, each of these are reciprocals. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Therefore, it is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Sorry to you type A people. I'm running out of room. And cotangent is adjacent over opposites. All right, so Katoa. All right, there's your sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, what do they call those acronyms? Okay, so 45, 45, 90 is a special right triangle that we'd like to see in the unit circle. Uh, shows up a lot. You'll see this uh, side length ratio here. Okay, 1, 1, root 2. You might see 1 half, 1 half. Square root of 2 over 2, that's common as well. Uh, 30, 60, 90 is half of an equilateral triangle. Um, before I get there, actually, these are your 45 degree angles in case you're wondering. Um, in a 30, 60, 90, here's your 60, here's your 30. Uh, the side across from the 30 we call a 1, hypotenuse a 2, and the height of that for the other leg would be a root 3. That gets us into the unit circle and gets us thinking about those values. So the sine of pi over 6, pi over 6, again, uh, is radian measure for 30 degrees. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. All right, so if I drew myself a triangle like this and put pi over 6 or 30 here, right, I'd be referencing this triangle here, which would put root 3 here, 1 here, and 2 here. So the sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of 7 pi over 6 puts us into quadrant 3. Recall, here you go, here's your unit circle. Here's 0, here's pi over 2. Here's pi, here's 3 pi over 2. All right, we could split it up into uh, 12 parts, which would put it into sixths. Right? Uh, 7 pi over 6 ends up down in this quadrant right, right here. Which is pi over six degree, uh, pi over six radians past pi, so this is six pi over six. We'd have to go one more pi over six to get there. So I've got myself a triangle here, again a 30, 60, 90. There's my pi over six. This would be a negative one. This would be a negative root three, and this would be a two because it's in quadrant three. Therefore, my cosine is negative root three over two adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, cosine of negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, so a negative angle, for our first negative angle, instead of rotating uh, counterclockwise, now we're going to rotate clockwise. So negative 3 pi over 2 is pi over 2. Oh, I want a different color. Is Here's negative pi over 2. Here's negative pi. Here's negative 3 pi over 2. Our cosine value right there, well, that point is the point 0, 1. Cosine is always x. Recall, cosine is always x over your hypotenuse, right? But there is no hypotenuse if there's no triangle, and therefore we get zero there. Tangent 11 pi over 2. Okay, so 11 pi over 2, where in the heck is that? Well, I'd subtract 2 pi. And what is 2 pi? 2 pi is 4 pi over 2. So let's subtract 4 pi over 2. Well, that'd be 7 pi over 2. I don't know that because I don't know my unit circle well enough. Okay, so let's do it again. Subtract 4 pi over 2 again. You get this coterminal angle of 3 pi over 2. I know where that is. That's going to be right here on the old unit circle. Boom. What is my tangent there? 
Well, my tangent there is my sine over my cosine. And remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So sine, our x value over our, excuse me, our y value over our x value. Well, negative 1 over 0 doesn't exist. So here's one way to write does not exist. If you prefer, you can write DNE as well. Okay, let's keep going. Let's graph. Time to graph. Okay, the sine function has a period of 2 pi. Um, I'm going to graph uh, two periods of this just to, because typically students are familiar with seeing this. All right, so let's graph a second period of that where this is negative 2 pi, this is negative pi, and that's 0. So there we go. The period is 2 pi. There's been no transformations as they're happening to that, so we don't have to stretch it, shrink it, shift it, flip it, nothing. Okay, uh, and we've talked about this in an earlier lesson. This would be an odd function, right? Because f of x and f of negative x are closely related, right? But they'd have negative opposite outputs, right? So their output values would be the opposite sign, okay? Uh, it's like a cosine. 0 to 2 pi. Oh, did it say to do 0 to 2 pi on that one? It did. I went from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Okay, cosine. Cosine starts up here at 1 and ends up back at 1 at 2 pi. Okay, and right in the middle at pi, it's going to hit its min value of negative 1. So we're going to get something that looks like this. Okay, and if we were to sketch that out and do a second, oh, wow, terrible and do a second period of it so that we could see what it would look like and see if it's even or odd. It looks to me poorly drawn, but it looks to be even, right? Because f of x and f of negative x, right, here at pi and negative pi, well, they're both the same value. So f of negative x is equal to f of x. Their outputs are, both of their outputs are negative 1. Right, so both of those equal negative 1. Therefore, that would be an even function. Uh, tangent. Let's graph that. It's probably been a while. From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Conveniently, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 are vertical asymptotes. So something different about tangent than sine and cosine is the period of sine and cosine is 2 pi. The period of tangent is just pi. Okay, here's our graph of tangent. Is that even or odd? Well, is there symmetry about the origin? Right, here we go, and here we go. Yes, there is. Rotational symmetry, odd function. You could confirm that uh, f of, I don't know, pi over 4, well, which equals 1. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1. What's the tangent of negative pi over 4? Well, it's negative 1. Therefore, f of x negative f of x is equal to f of negative x, and therefore we have an odd function. All right, let's continue. Uh, some of our trig identities, be familiar. Um, you know, I, I, I can't do much right now other than just say, try to remember these. Actually, don't try. Do it. And then they apply to the following. Uh, we're going to do a couple of, of uh, solving for x in an equation. This is an identity. All right, and you may not remember it, but you got to get there. That's 2 sine x cosine x. Well, where is that equal to sine x? If you're not sure, you know, get sure. I'm going to subtract sine x from both sides. And then out of both of these terms, I'm going to factor out a sine x. So what does that leave me on the inside? Well, I get 2 cosine x minus 1. Now, the zero product property, okay, the ZPP tells me that if the product of these two things is zero, then either this could equal zero or that could equal zero. Well, where is sine x equal to zero? Sine x is equal to zero at x equals zero pi and at x equals 2 pi. I have to include both of those even though they're coterminal because it says to include the endpoints of that interval. Okay, so then 
here, if 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0, then that means that cosine of x equals 1 half. Well, where is that true? I know that cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So where is the cosine 1 half? Well, that would mean this has to be a 1 and this has to be a 2. Well, that would mean that has to be a root 3. And even though this isn't drawn to scale, what would that angle and that angle be? Well, this angle here would have to be, what is that, pi over 3? Okay, and this angle down here would have to be, you're, you're tempted to say negative pi over 3, but that does not, oh, how the 3 turn into a 4? That's not going to be a viable answer because negative pi over 3 is not in this window. Therefore, we have to come up with this coterminal angle. I'm going to add 6 pi over 3, and that gives me an angle between 0 and pi over 2, which is that. So I've got four solutions. My four solutions are given right here. Boom, 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 and Yahtzee. Let's keep going with another example. Okay, tan squared equals 1. Well, how do I get tangent alone? Uh, and notice, our interval has changed here a little bit. So how do I get tan alone? I take the square root of both sides. So the tangent x would equal plus or minus the square root of 1. And, of course, that comes out to be plus or minus 1. So tan x equals plus or minus 1. Anytime you see a tangent that equals 1 or negative 1, you should think your pi over 4 angles here and here and here and here. So you got pi over 4, you got 3 pi over 4, you got 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Okay, two of the four of these are correct answers, and two of the four are wrong. Uh, because we're limited by 0 to pi, I know these two are my answers. So I get pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. These two answers are out based on the interval given. Last one. Here we go. Uh, actually, two more, I guess. Missed that one. Uh, let's go square root again. So cosine of x equals the square root, plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. Okay. Now, um, coming out of this, you got to have some algebra skills here. So I'm going to get plus or minus. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. I look on the unit circle. Where is the cosine plus or minus 1 half? Well, this. In the first quadrant. In quadrant 1, I would get uh, this angle would have to be pi over 3. Okay, so let's, let's isolate that for a moment. There's a cosine at... Pi over 3, the cosine of pi over 3 equals 1 half. So using symmetry, I would have four angles. Right? I'd get positive cosine here and here. I'd get a negative cosine value here and here. And I want positive and negative, and I want this interval of 0 to 2 pi. So all of these solutions will be good to go. We've got pi over 3. This would be 2 pi over 3. This would be... Ooh. Uh, scratch that, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So you get four solutions on this uh, question as well, which would all satisfy the original equation. Let's do one more. Um, and go from here. Uh, sine x, sine squared x equals 1 half. So sine x would equal plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. Now, 2 is not a perfect square, so we have to leave that as 1 over root 2. Okay, so where is the sine 1 over root 2? Okay. So we haven't looked at uh, a whole lot of these 45, 45, 90s yet, but in Q1, in quadrant 1, I would see a 1, 1 root 2. So that tells me this angle is pi over 4. Okay, so I want plus or minus 1 over root 2 on the entire interval of 0 to 2 pi, which tells me I'm going to have four answers, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. So don't get lulled to sleep by just assuming that every interval will be 0 to 2 pi. It may not be, and then you could potentially have too many answers or solutions. Uh, that would be it for today.
Yep. Have a great day and see you next time.